morning. My name is Barbara and I am the Environmental Education Manager at the Cape Fear Botanical Garden. And for this week's virtual tour, we are going to talk all about animal signs. Little clues and signs that animals leave that let us know where they've been. So we're going to talk about seven types of animal signs and we're going to go on a tour to look for some different animal signs. A few that I've planted out here for us to find and some natural ones that are actually just out here at the garden. Looking for animal signs is a great activity that you can do at home. It's a lot of fun and it's actually something that scientists do. Scientists use animal signs to tell them where rare and endangered animals have been, how many animals are in an area, if animals are healthy, what they've been eating, how they move, and if they live in packs. A couple examples, scientists in India use scats to track Bengal tigers, and they also use, have dogs in California who uh, find, who can track the scat of an, the endangered blunt-nosed leopard lizard cool animal I just learned about doing research for this project and I thought it was really neat that they'd actually train dogs to track that yeah so what are the different kinds of animal signs tracks are animal footprints and we'll look at a few examples of those scat which is of course the scientific word for poop and we'll talk about some of the different kinds of that as structures now that can be all different kinds of things that animals have built like a bird's nest a den a hole, a beaver dam or lodge, a spider web, or even something like a wasp nest. All examples. Uh, food leftovers are after an animal has eaten. They may leave nuts or uh, little pieces from their food. They may leave chew marks. They may leave brows. All different examples of food leftovers. Body parts. So this can be something as simple as a little bit of fur or feather that animals have left, or it can be something like a turtle shell or an antler. Sounds, of course, you hear your bird calls and your frog calls, insects calling. And smells, and that's one we don't often think of. It's one of the hardest ones to find, but you do sometimes get a skunk smell or a fox or something marking territory or a deer and musk. So there are a few smells that you can get. All right, join me as we go start looking for some animal signs. And right over here, we actually have our first one, which is an insect animal sign, because that's something we don't often think about. What did we find right there? That's not what I planted. That's actually from a plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but up here, if you see that little structure hanging off the roof, this is one that you might get around your house, and it is just a little bit of a wasp nest. so you can see what it looks like up close. This is a structure, and it is built by insects, so it's pretty cool to think that they actually build all those individual chambers, and it's really neat to see how they do the hexagon shape so they can all fit together without any spaces in between them. And you can see that it would hang off of that, off of something. Of course, don't play with a lock nest at home because you might not be sure that it's empty and you don't want to get stuck. Let's go this way. Look for a few more animal signs. Now this is one that I planted, but you can find these outside. Deer actually shed their antlers every year, and sometimes you'll see chew marks on them because they're a really good source of calcium, and other animals will actually try and chew on it in order to be able to get that calcium out of that. So that might be um, mice, it might be squirrels, it might be beavers, different animals that will chew on it. So they're a cool animal sign to find, and they're one of the body parts that you can find that doesn't necessarily mean that anything bad has happened to that animal. As we walk this way, oh, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> A what? A snake skin. Oh. Our next animal body part sign that we have here is the box turtle shell. You can actually see inside the shell that it is a part of the box turtle. That's their backbone. So it's actually a bone of their body. So we know that this turtle had passed away before this shell was found. But one of the cool things we can tell from the shell 
is we can actually see a lot of the patterns and colors that these box turtles use to camouflage. And box turtle shells are very curved and domed like that. And that's because these are a mostly terrestrial turtle. They're not gonna be swimming in the water. They're actually gonna be found more up on land. And so they don't have that uh, flatter, wider shell that a turtle that needs to swim. We're actually gonna collect these <laughs> so we don't have to come back. Let's go. Now here we can start looking for some real animal signs at the garden, and I see quite a bit of goose scat. We've had a goose here. We named him Gary. And we'll also see some spider webs along the walls. One of the things that's cool if you're looking for spider webs or different kinds of webs around structures is that you can actually look for different types. There are funnel webs, which are funnel shaped, sheet webs, cobwebs, which are just kind of messy or loose strings, as well as the beautiful orb webs that you might see pictured in books. There are also some webs that are actually caterpillar cocoons that you might see. I always look when I walk this way at the garden in the string uh, vine that we have for little lizards and things that sometimes stick their head. Next time when you can open, visit the garden when we are open, you can try that too. There's some little fish in the water there. And right over here, we'll see our first animal structure. And this is a nest, obviously it's in a box, so I did plant this one. And you can see how they've used a lot of different materials in the construction of the nest. Spider webs, pine needles, different kinds of leaves. Bird nests often have a lot of different layers and can be, and can have several different materials in them. You can also see that there's some stuff in the bottom of the nest that makes it look like this nest was actually used by a bird before it was found. It was probably found after it had been abandoned. Right over here, we have our first food leftover. So animals often are eating things, and sometimes those things are leaves, and we can see a lot of caterpillars have been eating this milkweed, and I actually know that they were monarch caterpillars, and we got some pictures of them last week. But I was out this morning and I didn't actually see any out here. So I'm not sure where they are right now. Maybe they've gone into their chrysalises already. But milkweed is a plant that monarchs really love. It's actually the only plant that they will lay their eggs on. So it's a really good one to know about. And we actually have some aphids. You want a picture of these. And those are tiny little insects on the bottom of the leaf there. And they can be very bright colors like that. So they're kind of cool to see. There's deer tracks over here, Sheila said. Nice. I'm look for those. While we're walking, um, what I'm doing is I'm listening for different kinds of animal sounds that I might hear, as well as looking around in the dirt, up on trees, for different kinds of animal signs. And that's what you'll want to do too. Really make sure you're observing carefully looking for all the details of where you might find them. I know up here we have some tracks. See where we find our first track. you can actually look for browse. And one of the things that's cool, browse is a word for when animals have eaten something, where an herbivore, so an animal that eats plants, has been eating. You can tell the difference between rabbit and deer browse because deer don't have teeth on the top, and so they'll leave jagged edges, whereas rabbit browse will be clean cut. Here we have some deer tracks. You can actually see the hoof print shape. Muddy spots like this are really good for you to look for tracks at home. 
a seasoned tracker, someone who has some expertise in this, can actually tell the age of a deer based a little bit on the shape of the track. They get wider, whether they're more closed at the tip or not. I'm actually not good enough at tracking to do that, but people who practice for a lot of years can sometimes do that. Some people even think they can tell a doe from a buck. That's a girl from a boy deer. And then Leo will have to step back just a tad. Um, I'll show you, we actually have some deer stat that we've kept in a box so that we can handle it safely. Um, and you'll see that deer scat is little pellets. And that's because they're an herbivore, they're eating plants. Deer and rabbits lay pellet-like scat. For deer, they'll be bigger and more pellets. For rabbits, they'll be smaller. But if you find very smelly scat, it's probably a carnivore. Chewed. This is an example of one that's been mulched. See how it's pretty um, solid on one side and just kind of grated but leaves lots of little strings on the other side? That probably means that this pine cone's been through a mulcher instead of being eaten off by a squirrel. And hopefully we'll find one later that's been eaten by a squirrel so we can see how they've cleanly pulled off each of the scales. Has been mulched. You probably can hear the police training academy across the road <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Don't worry, it's just the police. Here we can see some animals have been doing some damage to the tree here, but that's okay, they have to live too. You may find woodpecker holes or different kinds of insect damage, beetle holes in trees. Here you have some woodpecker holes on the side. We also have a few different kinds of cobwebs up on our tree, so a lot of animals that we can tell have been living in the tree. You can actually tell woodpeckers sometimes which woodpecker has been leaving holes from the site of the hole. So pileated woodpeckers will leave large rectangular holes in the tree. And red-bellied sapsuckers are the most likely ones in North Carolina to actually leave nuts and things stored in their holes. Mm. And woodpecker holes are actually really good for the environment. Before a lot of the flowers are blooming, they leave the holes in the trees leave sap, which are helpful for hummingbirds um, and insects that can't yet get that nectar from flowers. And here we also have a spider web. And one of the things that's really cool to note about webs is that not all the strings are sticky. The spiders have to be able to climb around on their own web. There's the spider itself. This is actually an orb web. It may be hard to see it, the actual web itself on the video but the spider is right there and what's really cool about that is if you can air in a place where you can gently without damaging it or touching the spider touch the strings you can feel how some are not sticky at all and those are ones that the spider is using to move around here where it's more muddy this would be a perfect spot for tracks i can actually tell i'm leaving my own tracks as i walk <laughs> the start of our river trail here at the garden. The river trail is one of our coolest trails. It goes down along the banks of the Cape River and lets you see some of the native wildlife that we have here. We get beavers and otters, raccoons and possums, coyotes and deer all on this trail. It's important to note that a lot of these animals are most active at night and or at dawn and dusk. Animals that are active at night are called nocturnal. Animals that are active at dawn and dusk are called crepuscular. Ooh, there's a dragonfly. Oh, a damselfly. Their wings are folded back like that. It's a damselfly. Sometimes you just see the animal itself instead of an animal sign. <laughs> 
the fact that so many large animals are most active at night is one of the reasons that we use animal signs instead of just uh, studying the animals themselves. Because it's often hard for humans to be able to be out there and seeing all the animals themselves. There's a lot of woodpecker holes in this fallen tree. And there we have our squirrel-eaten pine cone. So we can see the difference. A cone bone where they've left just the bare cone and the pile of scales that they've left that have fallen off. You'll also see sometimes two different kinds of tree nuts that are left by squirrels. Deer often leave rubbings along the sides of trees and sometimes you'll see beaver chews on trees. So those are things that you can look for spots where trees have actually been rubbed. And bobcats, if you're lucky enough to live somewhere where there might be a bobcat around, they're very, very hard to see but you might see scratch marks on the tree where they have been. Bears would also do that, so, but they would be higher up. There's a lot of cool animal signs. They look cool. And I think we've seen almost every kind. We didn't get to see any smells today, but I think we saw all other of six animal signs. So thank you for joining us today. Remember to check out our book, online 200 plus ways to explore nature in your home or backyard and there are a number of animal track and animal sign activities in there you can make uh, animal scat out of tootsie rolls edible scat uh, you can make dinosaur footprints dinosaur tracks made to scale to learn about size based on track so those are a few cool animal sign based activities thanks